welcome back to my channel. I am Balinist and philosopher, aesthetician, so Greek democracy in ancient Greece, especially in Athens, 7th, 6th, 5th centuries before Christianity, but see, in Greece it's um, a very impressive time, so there is a Greek colonization and this word doesn't carry any aggressive subtext, you know. It's just that Greece, Greece itself uh, isn't suitable for agriculture, it's very stony and arid. Italy already um, has or in Italy already exists Rome and Sibaris, it's the city of luxury and bliss, you know, and in Croton in the south of Italy, the famous Pythagoras of Samos founded his famous school, Pythagoreans. Uh, the colonizer city is called Metropolis, uh, so the mother city, just mother city. And uh, the shores of south southern Italy, Syracuse, uh, are being settled. The Greeks are moving mm, north through the Black Sea. And the third direction is to the south, to Kiran, through the Mediterranean Sea. Plato says, uh, that uh, the Greeks are like frog, uh, frogs around swamps, um, meanings, uh, meaning around the sea. Uh, so, how did the democratic system um, arise in Athens? It's a um, very interesting question. There were quarrels between the kings and the nobles, Eupatrids, so-called Eupatrids, and when Dorians, having captured the Peloponnese, invaded Megara, the Athenians started a war for independence with them. The oracle promised victory to the Dorians, but only if they didn't kill the king of Athens, Codrus. And Codrus, having learned about, having heard about it, uh, courageously sacrificed himself. Mm, uh, disguised as a shepherd and started a quarrel with army of Dorians. Uh, the Dorians, realizing that they had killed the king in the uh, clothes of shepherd, uh, retreated and uh, the Athens didn't find a more worthy king and his son Medond, uh, son of Quadrus, is already an archon. Archon. So um, there were great, uh, uh, there were Persian wars, Greece Persians, uh, from 500 to 449 BCE, and uh, the most uh, significant events were the revolt of Miletus, Miletus and other cities of Ionia against Persian rule uh, the invasion of Darius I on the Balkan Peninsula, uh, which ended with his defeat at Marathon, famous uh, Marathon's runner, you know, uh, the campaign of Xerxes I, um, and Athenian expedition to Egypt and end of the uh, Greece-Persian wars. Uh, it was 449. So, in Athens, the first written code of uh, laws was compiled by the tyrant Dracon. So, the form of monarchy, or it's not, uh, well, it's not monarchy, it's tyranny. Uh, tyranny, the form of power. Um, moreover, he didn't indulge in a variety of punishment. Uh, punishments for any crime, absolutely any crime, death followed. Uh, descend descendants later said that the draconian laws were written not in ink but in blood. And the dragon was uh, the so called Archon. And um, Archon in Athens, Athens is the highest official position where this position appeared even under Basilio, so it's very ancient position. And uh, Archon is a Greek word that means ruler. 
so uh, the most ancient were the positions of the first archon eponym, eponym the head of the executive power the year was called after him by the way uh, the second archon basilius uh, the, he was in charge of the cult of religion um, the third archon polymark he was a military commander so we have this differentiation between these archons uh, around the middle of the 7th century before Christianity, before Christianity, six more archons of Themosthes um, with uh, some other functions appeared. So, all um, nine archons made up the College of Senior Officials and after the reforms of Solon, 6th um, uh, century before Christianity, members of the highest property category, the richest nobles, in Greek uh, Pentakosio Medimnos, um, uh, the richest uh, could become archons, only the richest. Uh, and later also Hippias, uh, that's horsemen, riders, and um, their was second class these riders and uh, then Zeugitas third class um, could become archons but it was uh, later. The consequence of the dragon's cruelty was the rebellion of Kilon and uh, Solon was a eupatrid. This rebellion, um, this uprising uh, was suppressed by deception and uh, it caused rumors in the demos of Athens and Solon managed to settle the dispute by expelling uh, the deceivers of the Alcmeonids. So Solon uh, by the um, power of Solon by he, the time of his reforms. Uh, there were um, three parties in the Athen regions, um, so-called Hyperlacrion, um, the inhabitants of the mountains, the poorest people. So the um, Pades are the inhabitants of the plains, uh, noble landowners and the most prosperous people and Paralis, or the inhabitants of the coast, and merchants and sailors uh, sought to moderate the, the laws. And the elections of Archons were held by the Lord. The Diacrians lived under the heavy burden of debts and Aristotle in his policy says that it should be borne in mind that um, in general the state system in Athens was oligarchic but the main thing was that the poorest were enslaved not only themselves but also their children and wives and so on and so forth. So despite the fact that Aristotle considers extreme democracy um, rather an evil because it's necessary to regulate the system by laws and not by the opinion of this irregular uh, demos. <clears throat> he even treats Solon with sympathy. Solon resorted to easing the burdens of deaths, uh, the so-called seisachtia. Uh, this means a 27% reduction of capital deaths uh, and in addition, the Greeks saw him the return for the island Salamis, which they had lost with such regret that it was even forbidden to remember it on pain of death, you know. And Solon spread the rumor that he had gone mad, <laughs> um, composed a po poem calling for a fight for Salamis and shouted it in the square with great enthusiasm. And in a uh, thanks to this action, the Greeks gathered for campaign and returned this island Salamis. So, the Oreopagus, as viewed, viewed from the Acropolis, is a monolith where Athenians aristocrats 
decided important matters to stay during Solon's time. In order to strengthen civil society, Solon undertook the following divided <coughs> the Athenians into four classes, the richest, Pentacosio uh, Medimnos, valued at 500 medimnos uh, or more of cereals any, annually or oils or something eatable. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, 52 liters approximately. Uh, so second class he pays valued at 300 medimnos or more annually. Zeugitas valued at 200 medimnos and more. And um, Thets valued up to 199 medimnos annually or less. And according to the Athenian constitution, only the richest were eligible for election to high office as archons. And um, there were two anchors for the demos, uh, which Salon understood as anchors. The first is an Areopagus, the archons were sitting in it during the night. It was very mystically uh, so, and there was nothing, um, so, uh, sorry, uh, control over violation, viol, violations, violence, violations, oh, huh. and enforcement of laws um, is uh, the department of this Areopagus. The second encore is the Council of 400 and um, an elected body uh, where people from the first three classes um, were elected by the entire demos but only by citizens by citizens of Athens it's very important so Solon uh, seriously cared about education of young people and about respect for fatherland and for work and uh, young men studied music, gymnastics, and poetics, poetry. A love of uh, craft was brought up, in particular, Solon issued laws on trans of transparency of income, otherwise deprivation of civil rights. Mm. So, watch the end of the life, mm, the saying of Solon of Athens on the walls of the Delphic temple. Interesting, interestingly that the law according to Greek is so-called nomos. One of the meanings is a piece of music of a strict form. For me, as for a musician, it's very important. Uh, music for the ancient Greek is an expression of order. Its roots are eternal mathematical truths objects. Mm. So we can mention here Pythagorean system, of course, and if there is agreement in the state, in the state, um, then there is harmony like a musical one. So thank you for your attention and see you in the next video. And I'm going to practice my violin. <laughs> see you. Bye.